Hi, I'm Albert Burley. I'm the Executive Director of EV Business Development for Bluebird Corporation. All right, guys, you guys are riding on a Bluebird Zero Emission All Electric School Bus. This is our what we call our transit style bus. This is our highest passenger capacity bus we offer. Um, I think this one seated uh, our 78 passenger. We can do up to 84 passenger on this school bus. Um, it has a 155 kilowatt hour battery. It'll get you about a 100 mile range, which is more than sufficient for most, most school districts. Most school districts run about, on average, 30 to 40 miles in the morning and do the same in the afternoon routes. Um, this bus comes with what they call a CCS1 connector, so you can plug it into either a level 2 charger or a DC fast charger, which is perfect for schools. If they need a quick charge midday and have a DC fast charger, they can plug it in and basically get a full charge if it's depleted to 0% for their afternoon route. So if they had 100 miles in the morning and 100 miles in the afternoon, you'd be capable to do that with this bus. Uh, we've been building this bus for about three years now. We have more of these on the road than any other manufacturer. Between this and our smaller Type A product, we have about 1,100 buses sold, with about 600 of them currently deployed and operating in school district fleets today. Um, they have been great. Schools love them. Uh, really, the great thing about our electric product is if schools have Bluebird products and other fuel types, uh, basically there isn't a very big difference on electric school bus. Uh, basically, instead of fueling it with diesel or gasoline, they basically plug it in uh, to the charger. So uh, the controls, uh, how you drive it, uh, really a lot of that doesn't change from your typical school bus. So they're very comfortable driving our products because a lot of schools have Bluebirds today. So that's one of the nice benefits. Um, also has a neat feature called regenerative braking. It actually isn't brakes at all. Basically what happens when you take your foot off the accelerator, the motor on this bus basically spins in reverse and puts energy back into the batteries. So when drivers are trained to drive properly, you can extend your range by using the regenerative braking. So basically it's one pedal driving. You aren't hitting the brakes very much, you're just taking your foot off the gas. It basically works like an engine brake and kind of brakes itself. So you're extending battery, I'm sorry, extending brake life as well on these buses. Um, the other nice thing about electric school buses is the maintenance is much, much less than on a typical internal combustion engine bus because you have a lot less moving parts. You have uh, obviously no oil to change except for in the air compressor. The uh, batteries on this bus require zero maintenance on them and the motor does as well. So very few um, maintenance items on the bus. So they're saving, the school district saving anywhere from 60 to 80% savings annually just maintenance costs. Then you have the energy costs, which are much less than fuel costs, as you can imagine as well. So you're looking at significant savings on that side also. So it's been a great product for school districts. Um, luckily, there's uh, also a lot of grant money to help with some of the upfront costs. Like, for example, the new EPA program is being launched any day called the Clean School Bus Program. Uh, it's going to be $5 billion dedicated to um, alternative power buses over the next five years, which is going to put a lot more of these products on the roads to school districts and really also help kind of drive down those costs by having uh, really more economy and scale as we ramp up production and build more of these. So that's going to be a fantastic program for school districts as well. Uh, this one's pretty well equipped. You can see it's a California bus and it has three point belts. Most markets don't require three point belts in school buses. People ask why. Well, that's because they have kind of what you call compartmentalization, generally in an accident. Students will stay generally in this area, padded on both sides. So seat belts aren't required, except for just a few markets that require three-point belts, California's being one of them. This one also has air conditioning. It has a um, roof-type uh, air conditioning. It's uh, what they call a fully ducted system, so you can see it's very comfortable in this bus. Most school buses today, especially in these other markets, Run with air conditioning and luckily it doesn't pull a lot of power from the battery so it doesn't really consume a lot of energy um, and really reduce the range like some people might expect so a very nice uh, another nice feature um, 
power is fantastic on these buses. Uh, you're looking at not that you want to drive it like a race car, but if you put on the if you put the pedal to the metal, you're looking at I think it's zero to sixty in about twenty seconds, which is two to three times faster than a diesel bus. So if you have to get up on the highway quickly, you can do it more so on electric bus than any other product. Um, and of course, it's quiet. We're having a conversation here. If you're sitting in the last seat, we could have a similar conversation. One of the nice benefits you can all think about on electric school buses is because the volume level's lower. Um, kids tend to behave better on electric buses. The driver's safety is a nice benefit they've seen they wouldn't have thought about previously, but kids aren't yelling over the sound of some color, you know, louder. These are like gas powered engines, so they keep their voices down. It's less stressful for the driver, so it's really a safety feature as well. Matter of fact, you hear that humming noise, that's actually a noise generator. It turns on when you're going 20 miles um, per hour or lower. That's when our kids at the bus stop that the bus is coming. Otherwise, they couldn't hear it. And that would be a safety issue because you can step in front of the bus if it's completely quiet. So that's a nice feature that we build into all our buses. Uh, this bus also has vehicle to grid capability. Uh, that's kind of a new uh, feature in the school bus market, but it does give a school district the opportunity to work with the utilities and potentially sell energy back to the grid when the bus is sitting overnight. It's fully charged, has 155 kilowatt hours of power on it, and uh, if the grid needs it, it can pull energy from it. It's supposed to earn revenue from that. That's uh, come standard in all our um, electric school buses, so that's also a very nice feature with the blue birds.